artificial methods. In the case of artificial methods, there will be four classifications, including grafting, cutting, layering, and tissue culture. First, we will explain what is mean by tissue culture. It is the growth of cells or tissues in an artificial medium, in an artificial environment, separated from a parent organism. So the cells and the tissues are separated from a parent organism and it is allowed to grow in an artificial medium. It is allowed to grow in an artificial medium. Then that type of propagation is called tissue culture or that type of propagation is called tissue culture. For example, tissue culture in the case of orchid, there will be tissue culture is there. So it is the separation of cells or tissues from a parent organism and then it is allowed to grow in an artificial medium. That is called a tissue culture. Then what is mean by grafting? In the case of grafting, join two plant parts from different varieties. So here in the case of grafting, two different varieties of plants are joined together to form a new individual. Two different varieties of plants are joined together to form a new individual. In the case of mango, grafting is there. So, two different varieties of plants are joined together to form a new individual or new plant is called grafting. For example, mango. What about cutting? In the case of cutting, the name implies cutting such that the small shoot or branch cut from a plant and placed in water or planting medium to produce a new individual. The small shoot or branch from a parent organism or a, from a parent plant is cut and placed in water or soil or planting medium, any other planting medium to produce a new individual. This type of propagation is called a cutting. In the case of cutting, small shoot or branch cut from a parent plant and then it is placed in a planting medium to produce a new individual. For example, rose. In the case of layering, it is the bending of a shoot or the bending a shoot of a living, living organism stem to the soil. So, bending the shoot of a living stem to the soil to produce a new individual. Bending the shoot of a living, living stem to the soil to produce a new individual. That is called a layering. For example, jasmine. Already explained the tissue culture. These are the type of artificial methods in vegetative propagation. There is natural methods also. These are the types of artificial methods in vegetative propagation. That's all about vegetative propagation. Okay, moving to the parts of a flower. Moving to the parts of a flower. Flowers are the main reproductive part of a flowers are the main reproductive part of a plant. Flowers are the main reproductive part of a plant. So we want to discuss about the parts of flowers. Flowers including sepals, petals, stamens, and carpels. Sepals, petals stamens and carpels. So stamens and carpels are the reproductive part of a plant or otherwise we can simply say that the reproductive part of a flower. Stamens and carpels are the reproductive part of a flower, reproductive part of a flower which contains the, which contains the germ cells, which contains the germ cells. So which are the reproductive part of the flower? It is simply stamens and carpels are the reproductive part of the flower which contains the germ cells. And the male reproductive part or otherwise we can say that the male organ is the stamen and the female organ is the carpel. Male organ is the stamen and the female organ is the carpel. Male organ is the stamen and the female organ is the carpel. So the main four parts of the flower are sepals, petals, stamens, Carpels. Stamens and carpels are combined to form the reproductive part of the flower. Stamens are the male organ and carpels are the female organs. The male organ produces or makes male gametes and the female organ makes female gametes. So the male organ makes female, sorry, male organ makes male gametes and the female organ makes female gametes, which are present in the 
pollen grains which are male organ stamens are plus stamens is the male organ and which makes the male gametes and present in the pollen grains present in the pollen grains carpels is the female organ which makes the female gametes and present in the ovule of the plant which present in the ovule of the plant so these are the main four parts of the flower including sepals petals stamens and carpels stamens and carpels are combined to form the reproductive part of the flower and which uh, which contains the germ cells and the stamens are the male organ and carpels are the female organ the male organ produces or makes the male gametes and the female organ makes the female gametes the male organ makes the uh, male organ makes the male gametes and present in the pollen grains and the female organ makes the female gametes and present in the ovule of the plant that's all about the parts of a flower now moving to the pollination what is mean by pollination it's the transfer of pollen grains transfer of pollen grains is called pollination so there will be a transfer of pollen grains from where to where the transfer of pollen grains from anther of a stamen to stigma of a carpel that means the transfer of pollen grains from stamen to carpel stamen to carpel is called a pollination the transfer of a pollen grains from transfer of pollen grains from stamen to carpel so simply more accurately we can say that the transfer of a pollen grains from anther of a stamen to stigma of a carpel is called a pollination pollination are of two types self pollination and cross pollination from the name itself implies that what is mean by self pollination transfer of transfer of pollen grains pollen grains in same flower in same flower is called self pollination transfer of pollen grains in same flower that means the transfer of pollen grains from anther of a stamen to stigma of a carpel in the same flower is called self pollination then what is mean by cross pollination transfer of pollen grains from transfer of pollen grains from grains from one flower to one flower to another flower is called cross pollination so if there will be two flowers namely a and b here there will be a transfer occurs from a to b so if there will be an agent there is an agent needed to help for the transfer of the pollen grains that agent wind water etc or animals or animals etc will act as animals etc will act as the agents so they will carry the pollen grains from here and transfer the pollen grains to b so the duty of the agent is that that to transfer the duty of the agent is to transfer the pollen grains from a to b that means one flower to another flower so this is called a cross pollination which means that transfer of pollen grains from one flower to another flower transfer of pollen grains from one flower to another flower with the help of an agent agent like wind water or animals etc this is called a cross pollination so it simply transfer of pollen grains is called a pollination pollination are of two types self pollination and cross pollination transfer of pollen grains in the same flower is called a self pollination transfer of pollen grains from one flower to another flower with the help of an agent is called a cross pollination that's all about pollination now moving to fertilization so what is mean by fertilization the fusion of a male and female gametes to produce zygote the fusion of a the combination of male and female gametes to produce or otherwise we can say that the male gamete and female gamete to produce a zygote is called a fertilization the male gamete and female gamete combined to produce a zygote is called a fertilization so here the fertilization occurs inside the ovary here the fertilization in occurs inside the ovary 
right now we want to discuss about double fertilization what is mean by double fertilization double fertilization so in this case double fertilization double fertilization it is a characteristic feature feature of a flowering plant in which one sperm nucleus fuses with egg to form an embryo and the another one fuses with the secondary nucleus to produce an endosperm which is called a double fertilization in which one sperm nucleus combined with an egg to produce an embryo one sperm nucleus combined with an egg to produce an embryo and the second one combined with the secondary nucleus to produce an endosperm this is called a double fertilization the fusion of male and female zygote to produce an to produce a zygote fusion and fusion of male and female female gametes to produce a zygote is called a fertilization it occurs in the it occurs in the ovary it occurs inside the ovary then what is mean by double fertilization double fertilization is the characteristic feature of a flowers characteristic feature of a flowering plant in such a way that one sperm cell combined with an egg to produce an embryo and the next one combined with a secondary nucleus to produce an endosperm this is called a double fertilization moving to the male reproductive system and now we are moving to the sexual reproduction case uh, already we discussed about the sexual reproduction case and its classification like that now moving to the sexual reproduction case now sexual reproduction case we want to discuss about male reproductive system male reproductive system so the male reproductive system consists of testis vas deferens urethra and associated glands so what is the function of a testis so testis produce testis produce male germ cells testis produce male germ cells and it release male sex hormones as we know that testosterone male sex hormone testosterone so the testis produce male germ cells and it will release male sex hormones called a testosterone now what is the use of vas deferens it passes sperm from testis towards the urethra it passes sperm from testis towards the urethra so it is a canal i more shortly we can say that it is a canal or it is a passage that passes sperm from testis towards the urethra that allows sperm to pass through testis from uh, uh, that allows uh, sperm to pass through from testis to urethra to urethra so it is a canal or it is a passage 